Hello, math friends. This is Laura again. We're doing sex and algebra one, the 2009 book. Again, if, before you get too far, if you've got the wrong book, you better check. It's the one that has the camera on the front. And today is lesson two, understanding variables and expressions. Um, if you haven't done the warm up, you might want to try that. It's going to be a nice review, especially since we're here at the beginning of the year, just getting our brains in gear. All right, today we are talking about variables and expressions. And what are these things? You probably already know, you've already heard that a variable is a symbol, usually a letter. And what do we usually use? Mm -hmm. X. The next most common one is Y, X and Y. But they can be any letters that represents an unknown number. And then the constant is a quantity whose value doesn't change. It's basically the number. So we've got the number we know, which is 3. And we've got the number we don't know, which we call a variable, and it's x. And x could be any number. Well, what if x is 1? Well, then it's 3 times 1. What if x is 5? Well, then it's 3 times 5. The 3 never changes. The x can. Moving on. We've also got a couple of new terms here about factor and coefficient. Now these are all so easy, you just have to get used to them. When two or more quantities are multiplied, each is a factor. So, for example, if we have 6 times 3, 6 and 3 are factors. If we have 7 times 1, 7 and 1 are factors. So anytime you have multiplication, it doesn't matter which order it is. It could be 3 times 6 or 6 times 3. It doesn't matter how you write it. They're both factors. The coefficient is the constant factor of a product. So here's the way this works. These are all factors. 4 and x and y are all factors x and y, however, are variables, and 4 is the constant. It is also the coefficient. It's the constant factor. So 4 is the coefficient. Important to remember that so you can understand the problems when we come to them in the book. You want to be able to translate those into real life language so that you can do them easily. So when you see the word coefficient, you know well, that's the 4. All right, example 1. Identify the constants in each expression. Remember the constants. To be constant, you must not change. So here are the constants. In front of the x, there happens to be a 3. And the 6, just because it doesn't have an x, does not mean that it's not a constant. It's never going to change. Then, look at B, we've got two constants here, 71 and 28. There you go, how easy is that? Now, seems to be going the wrong way. Example 2, it says, identify the factors and coefficients in each expression. Well, you should be able to do this super easy after what we've just done. The factors are 7 W and V, and the coefficient is 7, and W, V are, what do we call them? Variables. On to B. This should be super easy for you. The negative 5 is the coefficient, and the factors then are negative 5 R, S, and T with one coefficient and three variables. No, you didn't have to do all of those. The factors, ah, look at C, ha, ha, ha. These are tricky, C and D, because when we are doing algebra, we write y over 3, but we mean 1y over 3, and we actually mean one third times y. We just know that y times 1 is y, so we write it like this. So in this case, the factors are one third and y, 
and the coefficient is one third, the variable is y. So knowing that about the one y on top, what in the world? There are two factors here, c and d, and that's it? Well, what do we do now? Well, every time we see a variable, there is something that is implied that we don't write down. And that is that if we have an x, there's a 1 in front of it. It's not 2x, it's just a plain x, which means we have 1x. If we have 2x, that's the same as saying x plus x is 2x. Well, here we just have 1x. So we have an invisible 1 in front of the c and d. But now we don't always say, oh, the coefficient is 1 when we have nothing there. It's kind of an implied coefficient. So this is kind of a trick. The implied coefficient is 1, and the variables are c and d. Ah, I love it when they try and trick us and it doesn't work. Okay, next. The terms, terms of an expression. I love stuff like this. It's kind of fun. We have terms of an expression. And that is just the parts of an expression that are usually separated by plus or minus signs. So here we've got um, a bunch of different terms. We've got one, two. This one has two terms. So next to each one of these, I'm going to write how many terms there are. This one has two terms. Okay. Now, let's look at, let's do the easy ones first. Negative 8. Obviously, it's one term of negative 8. 4x. Now, remember, this means 4 times x, but th that doesn't mean that it's two terms. This is still just one term. What if we have y plus 2? Well, separated by a plus sign, true. But the parentheses are telling us one term. This is a group. Now we have this one here, and we don't have any parentheses. We don't have anything. We've got one, two, three terms. And then p over 5 plus 1. That may look confusing, but this is a group, too. This is not two terms, one on top and one on bottom, or two on bottom. This is not three terms, P, 5, and 1. This is one term. What keeps them together is this division line. Okay, so let's look at this one here on the bottom and tell me which is the first, second, third, and fourth term. Hmm, if you need to pause, go ahead. I'm going to say, I'm going to circle the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. And here's the fourth one. So here's the first, second, third, and fourth term. That's pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. Oh, here, try this one on your own. Pause the video. Identify the terms in each expression. I'm sure you can do this now. We just did it. Okay, if you can hear me now, then you've restarted the video. So, this first one has how many terms? One, two, three terms. This is the first, second, and third. Okay, for B, we've got one, two, three, and four terms. Oh, that one's a long one, four terms. Okay, guess what, my friends? We only have one more slide left. Example four. The local telephone company uses the expression below to determine the monthly charges for individual customers. Okie dokie. A. How many terms are in the expression? One, two, two terms. Identify the constants. Well, that's going to be 0 0.1 and 
Okay, identify the variables. Well, there's only one, and it's an M. Okay. I think this was an easy day. It's nice on the second day. We will see you tomorrow, my friends. Make sure that you do the lesson practice. They're going to be just like what we did in the lesson. And then you can go ahead and do any appropriate homework you have to do. Uh, this is lesson two. We are on our way. See us for lesson three tomorrow.